Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, good competition. <laughs> No, good competition, no? That is what we are all wishing. It is happening now. <laughs> mm, uh, healthy competition. Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to this session on uh, cities as engines of growth. Uh, my name is Shivnath Tukral. I'm uh, with the Carnegie Endowment. Uh, and uh, to my left, on the other corner, is Mr. Chandra Babu Naidu. Honored to have you on the panel, uh, sir. He is the Chief Minister of Andhra Pradesh. And uh, of course, a new state in, in, in a lot of ways. And of course, his experience as a former chief minister as well uh, has enough uh, things to be very, very proud of, of as to what he did under his chief ministership. Uh, the man next to me doesn't need any introduction. Uh, he's the co-chair of the forum this year, plus the CEO of Niti Aayog, Amitabh Kant. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Uh, the topic uh, was given to me about a little while ago because I'm a last minute filler. but. Uh, uh, hopefully, uh, World Economic Forum uh, knows because of my past experience in media and having dealt with uh, Mr. Kant, uh, I should be able to do justice. But taking off uh, from uh, where we have been talking about a lot of things about economic development, urbanization, just a bit of, uh, give a bit of perspective. Uh, 1950, one third of uh, the country lived in cities. In 2050, two thirds of the world will live in cities. So uh, just to give some perspective, 2010, uh, to 2050, we'll have 500 million more people living in urban cities, which is equal to about 1.5 Americas that India needs to build. So that just gives you some perspective as to what the challenge lies as far as cities are concerned in this country. Uh, Mr. Naidu, I'll open it up uh, by asking you, you have an enormous task of building a new city, a new capital city, Amravati, and which is where you are looking for investments, looking for ideas. Uh, how different will your approach be this time, knowing that you're going to be catering to a demographic which is young, which is hungry, which is ambitious, needs a job, and always connected online to criticize you or compliment you? No. To start with, you may criticize. Ultimately, you will appreciate me. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm very happy. Always, without capital bifurcation, it is very painful process. It is a crisis. At the same time, how to convert crisis into an opportunity? Now, generally, people will get an opportunity to expand city, create one more city. For example, in Hyderabad, in 1995, I started, we had two cities. One is Sikindrabad, Hyderabad. Then I added one more city that is Saibarabad. That is a new city. Today, Saibarabad is the total economic <coughs> activity. You name all infrastructure, anything for that matter. It took for me nine years. It is a model city now. Knowledge economy, you name any company, they are all there. To start with, we didn't have one flight also. There, is no, there was no connectivity only Indian cities, but ultimately no foreign connectivity, so many problems. Then we have overcome all these things. Now one of the best airports in Hyderabad you have seen, and also fourth best city in India in terms of traffic, everything, even economy, even infrastructure. You can go through Hyderabad. At that time we have conceived 162 kilometers outer ring road, and also that is a six lane, ultimately eight lane, across metro, everything we have considered. Even widening of roads, better infrastructure we had done. This time, to build a new capital, greenfield capital, it is a rare opportunity. At that time, I developed one more city, and also I have improved the city. Today, I am seeing different picture altogether. I am visualizing. And also, this is a very dynamic place, beautiful place. I gave an offer. I don't have money. After bifurcation, you are all aware. Even for a family, for a company, at least companies will have big assets. There is a different issue. Last 50 years, everybody settled in Hyderabad. We have spent all our energies, resources in Hyderabad. Because of Hyderabad now, Telangana is having surplus budget, everything. 
then immediately we have shifted without having any offices. We don't have any office complex also there. Then I gave a call to the people, requesting them to participate in land pooling. You know, all of you, how land pooling or land acquisition is a big uh, problem, painful process. <coughs> Even nowadays, after new land uh, acquisition act and also new policy, it has become more and more problematic. So I gave a call. We don't have capital. It is a win-win situation. Why can't you, all of you join with me under land pooling? I'm very happy. 34,000 acres of land. I didn't spend even one pie. I was able to acquire 35,000 acres of land. For that, all political parties, as, you, as usual, they are all opposed. <laughs> They want to create problem. They provoked farmers. Wisdom prevails with farmers. <coughs> Ultimately, they supported me. Not even one litigation, except political litigation by political parties. Again, no farmer is going. Others are going to the court. Every aspect they are challenging. Green Tribunal, High Court, Supreme Court, different courts. And also, ultimately, we have called Swiss Challenge. That also they are challenging. Like that, they are creating some problems. But today, we, I am thinking very clearly, India, we have done so many cities. One is Chand Chandigarh, Naya Raipur, Bombay, New City, Navi Bombay, even Ahmedabad, that is the Gandhi Nagar, these are all the cities. But uh, this time, what I am thinking, it is a greenfield city, I wanted to build one of the best. I wanted to benchmark internationally. I am working, which are all the recent cities. It must be one among top five in the world. That is how I am planning to build this city. There is a very opportunity. Land is available. Now I want to bring the best educational institutions, best hospitals, best hotels, even international schools, tourism. I want to make it not only administrative city. It is an administrative city and also economic city. It has created, uh, we are all talking how things are happening in urban areas and also how growth is going to happen in urban areas. For us, that is a challenge. We are having one advantage around 40, kilo, 40 to 60 kilometers river. Both river friends, I can develop it. I asked him, we, can, we have considered blue and green consultant. He is working. One is Tata and also another partner is from Amsterdam. They are working with us. I asked him, anywhere this type of place is available? <coughs> he said, nowhere in the world. Because two rivers are merging there. One is Krishna. It is a, so much of water is available in reservoirs. Another river, Godavari, we have connected through lift irrigation. Ultimately, gravity waterway is going to come. Water, no problem. It is a city of full of canals. You know water is dynamism. It will give so much of energy. And also all buildings we are working, international buildings best iconic buildings. So this is uh, the work is going on. It will take some more time for takeoff. Already some of the best institutions, I can say WIT, they are coming and they are starting their work for engineering colleges, medical college, everything, 50,000 students. And also Amrut, they are also coming. Ameti, they are working. Even SRM, they are also coming. Some international schools are coming. So some hospitals, Indo, uh, Indo, Japan, England, they are coming one hospital from Dubai. One Mr. Shetty is also working with us. He is having some chain of <coughs> hospitals. So this is where we are moving in the direction. So, Mr. Naidu, if I may ask you, so clearly uh, this time around since the Greenfield project, uh, if something goes wrong, people will look at you, and if everything works out, they'll obviously say it was your job that you had to do it. But chances are less. Chances are less for failure. <laughs> Very good. I like Remember. your optimism, which is great. But uh, 
you clearly said when you were doing the land pooling, uh, it was political parties and the litigation by politicians, which is a problem. And you are uh, a great politician. You're also mindful of whatever you're trying to do has always have a five-year horizon or a five-year window because you eventually need to go back uh, and get that mandate back. How do you see both playing out, especially when it comes to urbanization, which somehow during election time is always beaten up as a favorite uh, topic because you know the urbanization is to blame for everything except that uh, as we go into the future, it is urbanization which is the answer to all the problems or rather majority of the problems that we face today. No, what I'm saying, one is urbanization, it is inevitable. You are handling urbanization. So you cannot stop urbanization. If you handle properly, it will be, it will be a big advantage. And at the same time, you have to concentrate rural also, agriculture also. This year I'm focusing, last year also we had done, this year we are doing innovative way. This year, uh, my agriculture growth rate is first quarter of this year, 22.5% on agriculture. All India is one, only 1.8%. Right. That is how we are focusing on water, energy, and also focus on agriculture operations, starting with seed, soil testing, micronutrients, everything. Right. So clearly, so you don't want to take your eyes off that, and I understand. Amitabh Khan, this remains one of the biggest challenge that if you don't develop your rural areas, cities will always be seen as something to be jealous of. And as you absorb that migration, as you absorb the people coming in, uh, as Mr. Naidu says, to get the best institutions, uh, get the best uh, colleges, health centers, you eventually, it all boils down to the kind of leadership you need, which believes in cities as a growth engine. Uh, do you think that's now beginning to fall into place, the work you're doing at Niti Aayog, when you talk to chief ministers, when you meet people like Mr. Naidu, that's something which is now taken as granted? Uh, you know, uh, Shivnath, firstly, India needs a second green revolution. You know, we need to make our agriculture productivity rise. We need to bring in technology in agriculture. But you can never have a green revolution in agriculture because the disguised unemployment in agriculture is enormous. If 58% of your population is dependent on agriculture, you need to take them out of agriculture and put them into manufacturing. And a logical consequence of that manufacturing process will be the process of urbanization. That's how it's happened across the world. It's important because, you know, I mean, if you go by latest studies, if 700 million people are going to get into the process of urbanization in India by 2020, by 2050, yeah. uh, that's what McKinsey says. That means the challenge is that every minute as we speak here today, there are 30 Indians moving from rural areas to urban areas. 700 million Indians means that you have to create two and a half Americas. And uh, you know, if we don't do this, every single city of India will become a slum. Mumbai is becoming a slum, Delhi is becoming a slum, Calcutta right outside Oberoi Hotel is becoming a slum. So you need to do new urbanization. We must understand this. And uh, India has been a very, very reluctant urbanizer. It's been a very reluctant urbanizer because prior to independence, we had several political leaders who, who had been mayors of cities. You know, Rajan Prashad, C. Raj Gopalachari, many of them had been mayors of cities. Post-independent, we, we didn't have many people who'd come with this experience of um, handling urban cities. Probably the only person who drove urbanization was Mr. Chandrababu Naidu, who drove uh, uh, urbanization in a very professional, scientific, efficient manner in the city of Hyderabad. And now the second one is, is uh, what we've seen the mayor of Nagpur getting elected as the chief minister of Maharashtra. So we, we didn't have any urban schemes for India. Now you need many more urban schemes. This government is the first government which is talking about 100 smart cities and the only way India can urbanize rapidly is you know to uh, to focus on very good innovative sustainable urbanization we can't copy the American model because when America urbanized land gas water were all cheaply available and because they were cheaply available, you could live in New Jersey, travel to New York, you could guzzle gas, you, you had limousines all over, uh, you had, uh, you, they created cities like Atlanta where 98% of the people travel by cars. So Americans created the most polluting cities. You need to learn from many more models and India needs to create compact, 
dense cities where you recycle your water, you recycle your waste. And many of those lessons actually come from the eastern part of the world. They come from Singapore and how they've made a very highly livable city through a compact, dense development. Uh, they've embedded their city with public transportation first. You need to learn from a city like Yokohama, which actually has reduced waste utilization by almost 40%. You learn from a city from like Kita Kyushu in Japan, where everything, it's one of the smartest cities in the world, which became the most polluted city in 70s when Japan started manufacturing. The women of Kita Kyushu rose in revolt, and Meti worked with them. The Ministry of Trade and Industry of Japan worked with them, and they recycle everything today, from automobiles to uh, bulbs to everything is recycled there. And it's one of the smartest cities in terms of waste management. So these are examples, right. and India needs to emulate many of those models rather than copying the Western model. But the great thing is that India is getting this opportunity. You know, the process of urbanization has ended across America, it's ended across Europe, it's nearing its completion in China. India, the process of urbanization has just begun, just begun. And in the next five decades, we'll do more urbanization than what we've done in the last 5,000 years. And therefore, India holds the key to an innovative, sustainable strategy of urbanization for the rest of the world. If we do it right, if Mr. Chandra Babu Naidu do, does it right, which I'm 100% sure he will, then we'll create a model for the rest of the world. Right, and I think that's, that's the, both the challenge and the opportunity. You use two words, and if I may highlight, uh, whenever you make uh, two and a half mil uh, times of America into India, or uh, next decade worth what we have seen in 5,000 years, the two uh, measures that you have to look at when it comes to cities is sustainability and livability. And uh, when you talk about sustainability and livability, so, so the challenge goes to you, Mr. Naidu, uh, in form of two questions. One, uh, as a state chief minister, what do you really make of the Smart City Initiative? Because sitting in Delhi, uh, we may have a view that it's a great plan, but somebody who's going to implement it. So where do things like technology fit in? Where do things like uh, and modern ways of sanitation, um, uh, urban uh, uh, health uh, centers, all these fit in? And second, when you talk about livability, there is a huge metric, which is social inclusiveness. Do you see cities as centers of social inclusiveness, or would you like to promote centers where there are gated communities, where there are rich versus poor? How do you want to adopt this going forward? No, it is, um, I will give you an example. How things are happening nowadays because of technology and also Internet of Things. This is a deadly combination. How we are using, I will tell you, one city, or everywhere we are doing, in Visakhapatnam, exactly two years back, we had a severe cyclone, Udhud cyclone. It has devastated total city. No communication, no plants, no water connectivity, totally collapsed, everything. Then always crisis is an opportunity. I was there for seven days, eight days. I stayed in bus, I brought normalcy, then only I returned to Hyderabad. Then, we have created a very good events, three, four events we conducted. If you go today, Visakhapatnam, it will be altogether best city in India. All these things happened within one and a half, two years' time. Even in Andhra Pradesh, now technology how we are using, <coughs> totally all my LED bulbs. First time we had a crisis, then I thought how to go about. Then we got an idea by discussing. LED bulbs, so I can't replace. LED bulbs are saving energy nearly 40%. What I'm spending today money, they are giving 30% for me. Remaining 70% I'm giving for investor, that is the Government of India entity. They have completed in Andhra Pradesh 5.5 lakh LED bulbs as of now. And also, I didn't spend even on, on pi. I'm getting 30% benefit out of it. Second one, they are going sensor-based. All 5,50,000, it will be on sensor. I can monitor from my control room. If you see Visakhapatnam, each bulb is on, which bulb is burnt, how much time they have replaced, everything it is on. So you're collecting not, big data in that sense? Not, not only big data. It is the control room, if you see, if you, you know automatically which bulb is, how many bulbs are working, how many bulbs are bur burnt, at what time. Through app, we have developed one of the most important app, Kaizala, that is uh, Microsoft. Okay. Real time, I can send back. 
information to the concerned officer, concerned service provider. And also database you can establish, I can cut there um, what we are, we are going to pay automatically, service standards. Let me ask you one example I'm telling you. It's a great example and that's also a segue for my question about the future of technology. There is a, um, on the fourth industrial revolution, we had a discussion yesterday where there were things about, and Mr. Suresh Prabhu, uh, uh, the railway minister said that we need to be aware of what robots and artificial intelligence will do in terms of displacement of jobs. So let me listen to your views on how will you create employment, keeping in mind the challenges that technology will also throw up. Now what I'm saying today, all of you, you cannot escape technology. It is a reality. First industrial revolution, only small mechanization. Second industrial revolution, it took so much of time to go for generation of power, electricity. Third industrial revolution, information technology, internet. Fourth is now it is go moving. Within no time, very short time, fourth industrial revolution. We are witnessing during my time, I used it to jokingly, I promoted family planning in a big way in my earlier tenure. Now I am promoting farm, family welfare and also promotion of population now. My population is stagnant, diminishing. <clears throat> I am worried about it. What China experienced, South India is experiencing now, slowly. Same thing I am telling you, technology is moving very fast. Either biometrics, CCTV cameras, drones, robotics, if we can go virtual reality, machine learning, all these things are happening. You cannot avoid it. At the same time, by using all these things, my public distribution system, through Aadhaar based, we are able to save. Real beneficiary is getting very easily. My pensions total accountability. I am going for e-office. Now there is no workload for all our officers. Mm -hmm. Earlier there was a hierarchical. Mm. One file in so many places. Multiplier. Today, all flat governance. I don't have problems. People are also enjoying now. So, you, so what you, I'm you, saying, all these things, e-office, e-government, e-cabinet, everything I'm going paperless office in Andhra Pradesh. Right. Very soon, all these things are going to happen. At the same time, we can create employment. So you don't see that as a challenge. You see employment opportunities will arise as no, even... skills, if you develop, different employment will come. Tourism, hotels, or service sector, even industry. Simultaneously, when you save wealth or you save money, that money, if you spend, again, investment, will create more jobs. Right. Interesting uh, to hear a state leader talk like that because uh, we only hear about the fears of uh, adoption of technology and AI and robots. Mr. Amitabh Khan, before I throw it open to the audience, I want your view on one very, very important subject and we have a lot of uh, professionals in this room, including both of you. Uh, the level of expertise or knowledge within the government to urbanize versus the knowledge that exists outside. How can both these work together? Because left it to politicians, it will be a bit of a challenge, as we have seen in the past. You know, I'm glad that uh, CM Andhra is taking a little bit of time on uh, Amravati, because to my mind, uh, planning a city is very critical, and he's got some of the best planners from across the world. Designing a city is very critical. Uh, doing detailed engineering is very critical. And embedding that city with underground network of infrastructure is very critical. And in India, we have this habit of rushing in with infrastructure work without doing detailed engineering. We award the work and we keep doing planning and engineering while the work is going on. And I'm really glad that detailed time is being taken to do planning, detailed engineering before we get into detailed execution. That's the key. But the key to urbanization is, your, is our ability to monetize land values. And India has been extremely poor in its ability to monetize land values. I mean, look at the example of uh, uh, two urbanization that have taken place on either side of Delhi. You know, uh, Gurgaon and Gurgaon we urbanized without basic infrastructure. So when you did urbanization, land values shot up. When they shot up, 
those values should have been captured and put back into city infrastructure. But they went to builders and developers. They never went <clears> back <throat> to Gurgaon city. The second example is of Noida, where very good infrastructure was created. Excellent infrastructure was created, Noida, Greater Noida. Land values again shot up, but these were captured by political parties. So you have two extreme examples. Unless and until land value, the key to urbanization, wherever it has succeeded, is that land values, when they shoot up, monetization of land values must be captured in the city for creating more and more infrastructure and expanding that city's infrastructure. And that's the model which CM, uh, 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 Mr. Naidu is following. So I think the monetization, we must understand, good planning, good detailed engineering, uh, a great amount of laying down the underground uh, infrastructure. But the key is capturing land values. That's the crux. And uh, when you say that, I mean, in my previous Avtara, the journalist, I would have said, okay, capturing land value is an expertise which lies only with politicians, and then it came to developers, and that's where it got stuck. So, um, and I think there's a North India model and there's a South India model to capturing monetary uh, value of land. I live in Gurgaon, so I can, I can sympathize with what you're saying because it rains for one day or half a day and then you really can't con come to Delhi from Gurgaon unless you're taking the metro, which is not thanks to the Haryana government, but the DMRC. But at this point, I'll open it up to the audience. I have lots of questions, I know, uh, given the... Uh, I'll, I'll come to each one of you. Let's take a bunch, a couple of questions together. Let me start at the very end, and then I'll come in front. Can you please stand? And my only request is don't give long questions, target it, and identify who you want this answer to come from. Thank you. Anirudh Sharma from Carbon Clean Solutions. Uh, my question is to Mr. Amitabh Kant. Uh, we've recently signed uh, the Paris Climate Change Agreement, and now that you know, you're talking about urbanization, how do you see cities developing while still maintaining that you know, green tag and not polluting? No. Uh, uh, can I take one more question? It'll be easier yeah, for you. Sure. So, uh, um, yeah. <coughs> huh? yeah. So quickly, uh, just. Thank you. I'm Devendra Jani from Amdocs, a global shaper. Um, behavior change is something which we are finding it very challenging. You have infrastructure, but citizens are abusing it. Metro seats are ripping off, and pedestrians are not being taken care of when you're driving. Educated people are throwing trash. Are there any tools or any plans for behavior change with the citizens? Because cities are uh, how the citizens are. Okay, okay. let's uh, start with Mr. Khan on the green tag, and Mr. Naidu on uh, how do you plan to deal with citizen behavior. Mr. Khan, first to you. You know, firstly, I don't think you can have smart cities at all till you don't have smart people. And uh, <laughs> so we, we started the wrong way. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, I mean, you, you expect politicians to keep cities clean or elected people to keep cit cities clean while you keep throwing garbage and dust around. It's not possible. I mean, the basic thing is Indians must start taking responsibility no, for keeping... You are their... blaming only politicians. <laughs> you are bureaucracy also. <laughs> We are using that. <laughs> Actually, he was, uh, he was giving a backhand compliment, <laughs> by the way. You are bureaucrat. <laughs> you but are in, also responsible. But in Delhi, you, you should only blame Mr. Arvind Kejriwal. <laughs> <laughs> this is for the record, guys. All right. Okay. Okay. But on the green but, tag. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I mean, it's important that each one of us, whether we are common citizens or bureaucrats or politicians, one of us, each one of us, Indians are not responsible enough. We don't take ownership of the areas around us. We believe that we'll keep our house clean and throw dirt around. That will not happen. I mean, with that, India can never be a smart country, ever. And therefore, you know, many, I see the change in India, you know, I mean, politicians have become far more uh, delivery oriented. Change is being driven. And unless and until citizens don't become responsible, it'll be very difficult to drive this. And citizens must also, while they demand their right, they must be also uh, take, they must also take responsibility, that's one. Number two, I think uh, the key to what you said about uh, having a green India is, is about doing the right kind <coughs> of planning. You know, if you want to meet your commitments to, <laughs> towards uh, the Paris goals, it's important that you embed your cities with public transportation. You know, I, I said this, that American cities were made for cars and not for people because uh, the American car companies actually bought over the railway companies and destroyed them because they had to sell their cars. That model is not applicable anymore in any other country. You need to embed, when you do new urbanization, embed your cities with public transportation, even if it is mass rapid transport with buses, but you have to do that. You need to recycle your waste. You need to recycle your water. We've been about three decades late in this, but now every single state is now focusing on recycling of waste and recycling of water. You do just these three things, you'll meet your targets. Mr. Naidu, from you, uh, on yeah. citizen behavior as well as very quickly on the environment bit. 
no this is a uh, one aspect behavioral attitudinal changes how to bring uh, i was a swachh bharat subcommittee convener to give a report i studied all these things never we focused this type of activities then at the time amitabh was not with the uh, niti ayog uh, under the uh, niti ayog we have we had some meetings for example i am telling you all over the world people are uh, same everybody is eating everybody is drinking everybody is uh, taking bath everything but they are able to dispose everything very effectively in india as a opposition leader even during my time we had problems then opposition leader more problems and then i have seen quantum of uh, just like hills all garbage waste when rain will come it will percolate mm. and then kilometers together 10 kilometers 15 kilometers so much of smell pollution then uh, we went to uh, tokyo i have seen even in middle of the city small plants are operating waste to energy very effectively even jindal here it is working in delhi but never we have replicated or any defect we can improve further immediately i got an idea then i gave recommendations also this type of issues central government state government revenue on that it is only notional all taxes you exempt then go to regulatory commission plant in my state 10 plants we are starting now it is only 65 megawatts around 4500 or 5000 metric tons garbage you can convert into energy we are having around 12000 megawatts of power it is nothing one paisa <coughs> now with one day ishan without spending any money we are converting waste to energy all solid waste management we are doing now this is one at i'm saying same thing you can go for sewerage same thing what is said say we can go here attitudinal changes it is very interesting japan if you go nobody will throw paper on road you see you identify and also somebody will throw paper by mistake you found immediately will catch it take to the home and put it in dustbin that is the culture over a period of time singapore anybody will throw paper on the road immediately 500 dollars fine finish everybody is afraid one day my minister ashok is here <laughs> he is now civil aviation minister my colleague as a finance minister he came along with me he smokes <laughs> totally in singapore he avoided then i asked him what's saying ashok what happened to you <laughs> why you are not smoking sir here 500 rupees fine <laughs> singapore dollar <laughs> 500 <laughs> i am having only that money then what to do so i don't want to smoke here And is that a good idea for amravati maybe eh? maybe a good idea for amravati <laughs> i'm saying first of all you have to educate people people are very smart if everything is clean people will think twice through 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 paper you go to visakhapatnam now it is clean it is a matter of how you are going to perform continuously educate <laughs> people that's why we gave a recommendation every school every college every office they have to be involved public right. awareness is important uh, can we uh, get the mic here right in the front and with mr bajaj after that yeah uh one in the jacket yes please because. thank you shimnath and uh, you know this is for both mr kant and mr naidu you know taking a cue from what you said sir uh, swiss challenge uh, getting challenge so for these 100 smarter cities uh, to be uh, really uh, successful uh, uh don't you think i mean the public procurement uh, uh, processes uh, you know which we have been uh, following uh, for so many years they need to be changed i mean there is a there is a you know uh, slide which is ongoing in social media Taj Mahal would not be Taj Mahal had uh, Shah Jahan decided on uh, three quotations and the lowest one uh, bidder. So, so you know, uh, why not QCBS? Why not you know Swiss Challenge? Uh, I mean, it's if we're really serious to make it. Uh, I got it. Interesting question. We'll uh, come to that. Uh, can I get Mr. Bajaj? Mr. Bajaj, you have a point. Yeah, and then I'll come to you. Yes. I cannot help but admire Chandra Babu Naidu. You, you nurtured a baby, and then lost it, but you did not shed a tear. But you are. preparing another better baby 
I believe this baby can become the forerunner to the other smart cities if you do it well. I remember you had taken a consultant, I think it was McKinsey and Company, to help you with the complete planning, development, infrastructure and everything. Do you have uh, such a model of taking a consultant uh, with you for uh, your new city or? Okay, yeah, got your point. Uh, one more. No, but, uh, take, uh, no, I'll take a couple question. of questions. It's uh, uh, another question. Okay. Uh, you know, we have always believed, whenever I've heard, whether it's Samitab or ministers or whatever, urbanization is centralizing. <clears throat> People are coming in from villages to cities. This is what urbanization is in the perception of people. It need not be. It can be decentralized where I say villages can be urbanized. If you have the basics around villages, infrastructure, then those villages can become yeah. urbanized cities. And therefore, you do not have to have reverse migration. You'll have reverse migration, in, in, in fact, rather than people coming into cities and making a mess of cities. Right. Get your, okay. Uh, yeah. OK, go ahead. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Gaurav Gogoi, member of parliament from Assam. And this is my question uh, to the Honorable Chief Minister. Traditionally, you know, we look upon, uh, as architects of urban planning, we look towards Luthiens or Corbusier. But I am confident in the future generations, as architects of urban planning, will look towards you, sir. Because you've, of course, as you've done with Cyberabad, and now of Amrabati will be a success. But what is your uh, advice towards smaller states uh, with uh, lesser resources and uh, lesser access to wealth as to how do they plan, design, and finance new cities? Being from a, uh, even in your case, you, you started saying that your access to finance was limited. You had to rely upon land pooling. You know, how can we do that in terms of financing new cities in more backward regions such as eastern and northeastern India? Good question, actually. Yeah. I'll take just one uh, more question. Can I just take it from here and then I'll need to, uh, uh, yeah, just quickly, please, because I need to wrap it up. So, my that. question is building upon what Mr. Bajaj had asked about de urbanization and developing more villages. Is the central and state government together working? Because we've been hearing a lot about. You know, we are doing this with certain city, certain city, but what about the disproportionate gro economic growth <coughs> more towards the cities which uh, Mr. Khan mentioned are turning into, uh, you know, literally garbage bins? So how does the central and the state government, or rather the central planning body and the state government look at the problem? So Fair what are your perspectives on that? All right, so let's go to the answers, and we'll start with the public procurement system. And uh, if I may start with an anecdote which I heard in the corridors of power yesterday, saying that every time you guys make this argument about uh, choose the higher bidder, remember, we made the Mars mission at $75 million, Americans did at $750 million, so we know best. So don't tell us that we have to choose the highest because we did it at $75 million. Now, please tell us how does that change the metrics of success as we go along and do the best quality stuff? See, I have, uh, you know, I've done several initiatives starting from uh, God's Own Country campaign in Kerala, Incredible India, Make in India. And I've, let me tell you, I've never worked on L1, never in my career. I've never worked on the lowest cost. Uh, and I, you know, I went and actually discussed this with the CAG. And what the CAG told me was that what the government wants you to do is to, you know, I mean, if I was to design a campaign where I say that my painting will be compared with M.F. Hussain's painting, it's absurd. You know, I'll sell it at one rupee, Hussain's will be a lakh of rupee. You want to get the best creative director. So, uh, actually, that file went up to uh, the finance minister when I was doing the Incredible India campaign. The FA opposed me on this. Uh, I was then the joint secretary. The financial advisor opposed me, and I, I went and discussed this. And uh, what the government wants you to do is to follow a transparent, competitive process. It doesn't say buy at the lowest cost. You're not buying pens. You're not buying cups. You're, do you're creating a city. You are making, you have to have a vision of a city. You are doing new urbanization. You are changing the shape of India. And therefore, you need to work with the best people, the brightest people of the world who have the experience. And therefore, lay that principle down in your RFP, RFQ. Select the best in the world. Give out a reasoned argument. 
important. If you do that in your RFP, RFQ, what it wants, just lay down a transparent, competitive process and select the best people. And that's what I've always believed and I've always done that in my life. And I've had never any problem. Um, and give out a reasoned argument on that. Mr. Naidu, uh, if you can touch upon that as well as the consultant model that everybody talked about plus decentralized urbanization. No, as he rightly mentioned, there is uh, what he said is right. You want to get quality, you have to go to the best. Among best, you can select. That is a different issue. And at the same time, <clears throat> even today, in the name of public interest litigation, some of the people are not understanding all these things. They are blocking. They are creating some problems. Ultimately, project will suffer. That is one issue. That is how to overcome. We have to overcome in course of time. Even sometimes a switch challenge, even you go transparent way also, they are challenging. <laughs> Even capacities, even media will write something without understanding. I'm sorry to say this. Even at lower level, perception also they don't have on all so many subjects. That is another uh, important issue. As you rightly mentioned, urban and rural. If you give rural infrastructure also, people will uh, stay some, to a certain extent. Migration is inevitable for employment for higher income. Generally, that is the trend. If you, if I am in my village, I should have done some agriculture. Then I became MLA, I shifted to Hyderabad. Then naturally, <coughs> Hyderabad is better place for exposure. I got knowledge, skills, everything. Then I build my career. Same thing if you go to Bombay, you will have better exposure compared to Hyderabad. If you go to New York, or Washington, you will have world <laughs> exposure. This is the reality. So, both rural area, we have to create best infrastructure. There is no doubt about it. People are living there. And at the same time, urban area also, migration is inevitable because of connectivity, because of access, because of knowledge, because of opportunities, so many things. So, we have to work together, both. As you rightly mentioned, money, yes, it is very, very important for anything. How you are all doing, so many of you, when an entrepreneur will start, nowadays, start up, innovative ideas. What is their big idea in Amazon.com? What is their big idea in Uber, Flipkart? <laughs> Latest trends they are able to capture, process they are able to do well. Then ultimately, over a period of time, they are emerging as leaders. Same thing in politics, same thing in leadership. If you provide all these things, even Assam will become one of the most beautiful places. Greenery and also water, everything is available in Assam. Even some of the states, what Tamil Nadu? They don't have water. They don't have um, mineral wealth. But they built one of the best city, best state over a period of time. What is Singapore? You go to Singapore. Is there any asset? Even earth, they are importing. Water, they are importing. Even used water, they are converting. PM is drinking that water by saying new water. He is promoting. They have done. What is Dubai? 55 degrees temperature. Desert. They made it heaven. They are using sea. Even they are considered one of the best hotels in sea. If you go to beach, our people won't allow. Social activists will come. They won't allow to go to that beach. <laughs> but in turn, we are polluting the sea. We are leaving all our affluence to the sea. This is where I'm saying attitude will change. Leadership, if you give, you can do wonders. Interesting that you say that. Uh, efficiency of startups and leadership. I'll remember that quote, uh, Mr. Naidu. Mr. Kant, uh, just to go back to the urban-rural thing, there is a government scheme called Pura, right? Provision of urban amenities in rural areas. So can you just shed a little more light as to, is that the solution to the migration from an aspirational point of view, as Mr. Naidu said? See, uh, we must understand that cities are centers of creativity. They are centers of innovation. innovation they are centers of growth. You know, cities occupy just 3% of the earth land mass, but they generate 76% of the global GDP comes from cities. So if 76% of the global GDP is coming from 3% of the earth land mass, these are cities. And therefore, 
Cities are attractive because they create jobs, they create a certain level of dynamism, they create a certain working environment where creativity is flourishing. Arts, artists, innovation, dynamism, all is happening in cities. And therefore, Indian cities have to, be, have to capture that. And Indian cities must become that vibrant dynamism. You will never be able to provide that. If that was the process, this would have happened in many other parts of the world as well, that rural areas, you will do this. That will not happen. You know, but you need to provide better infrastructure, better quality of life, as the CM has said, in rural areas as well. And that is what Pura is designed for. But essentially, we must understand that our process of urbanization has just begun, just begun. And we need to learn from all the lessons of the world to create the most innovative, the most sustainable cities in the world. China has done urbanization, but China has made a lot of mistakes. It's copied the American model and made a lot of mistakes. They've created polluting cities. India can't afford that. If India makes those mistakes, for India to make those mistakes, you need four planet Earth. But you have only one planet Earth. And so India must create the most sustainable and the most innovative societies, uh, cities in the world, uh, which can then become a model for each, for European and American cities as well. I have uh, time for one or two questions at best. Yes, sir, you wanted to ask a question. Can I get the mic in the front and before? Uh, yes, ma'am. My name is Sudhir from Thomson Reuters. Mr. Khan. We are talking of 100 smart cities. Now, if you really see, it will take three years, five years before anything really concrete comes. I'm using a term lawlessness to lawfulness. Can we drive an initiative like this and we can say that we identify 10 things which are contributing to smart cities and the evils in today's cities. And we say anybody who's going for smart city must do these 10 things even today. Now, this could be just to... Uh, uh, and you know, smart city encroachment policy, smart city parking policy. We take this very basic. Trust me, by the time I this is I believe, and I want to have your views. Okay, by the time smart city actually will come up, can because today Delhi's pollution we figured out the vehicles pollution the cause of vehicles were causing very little percentage. It is the other factors who are causing right. pollution. So can we look at some of this thing? And I am calling a term called lawlessness to lawfulness. I'll, I'll come to you. One second, Mr. Khan. One lady at the back, please. One, and that's the final question for the Hi, session. I'm Monica. Uh, I'm from GPP Infra and a global shaper from Chandigarh. My question is, uh, since we're talking about smart cities, and the nine modules that I've read about the smart city, Project Vizag or Project Bhavneshwar, they talk about technology. And when they talk about technology, they talk about digitization of water system, sewage system, and stuff and stuff. But they do not talk about technology in infrastructure field. We are still following the conventional building processes. We, we're still doing one year long building thing. We're not getting into prefab primarily. We're not making it compulsory. What we're talking in terms of technology for smart city is only digitization. All right, so. got your point. Uh, Mr. Khan, start with you. Lawlessness to lawfulness and how that can be built into the smart city initiatives. No, actually, one of the best things that happened was that when smart cities were selected, they went through a challenge process and uh, that the Prime Minister was very determined to do. So uh, his own constituency was not selected. Varanasi was selected in the third round, uh, in the last round. But uh, it went through a huge process of challenge. And every city had to do several rounds of participation with its citizens to get selected and prepare a plan. It was one of the most exhaustive processes of challenges. As uh, you know, it was initiated by uh, Mayor Bloomberg earlier which has been replicated, but it was one of the most exhaustive processes. And uh, it required a huge amount of hard work. Uh, I think uh, CM will dwell on this, but it, it required a huge amount of hard work. It required part citizens to participate, and that's all. So you can call it lawlessness to lawfulness or whatever, but all these cities have been through a process of challenge. It's not that you've just awarded a smart city. They've been through almost one year of hard work on this. They've said that they're committed to this, 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 not one, but 100 things. Mr. Naidu? Yeah, as you rightly mentioned, that is the answer for you. Smart city, that is a very good initiative. At least we are all focusing on smart cities. Anybody wanted to compete, naturally they have to go that process. That process is public consultations regularly, opinion taking, and then improvement further, then only they are eligible. So, uh, both answers will be given in this, even not only technology. Technology is only a tool. 
in a computer if you put garbage garbage will come no quality data or quality to things won't come we must know how to use technology for overall well being or betterment that is where uh, we are all now all right um, i'll take this opportunity to uh, try and wrap this discussion up uh, by starting uh, to ask mr naidu first one thing which i did not hear in this conversation was about this whole housing uh, initiatives housing for all whether it's rich or poor and where does that feature and combined with that what we heard this afternoon in terms of prioritization if you would say building a green uh, field city this is my biggest challenge what would that be and secondly where does housing fit into your larger scheme of things and affordability of that housing yeah, generally what we are doing in uh, housing compared to rural housing urban housing <coughs> i am talking uh, urbanization i am talking urban housing now government of india is giving 150000 rupees for each house government of andhra pradesh is giving equal amount 150000 we are giving 60 33 lakh rupees for each house for beneficiary and also those we are having land will give this land for developer developer will prepare everything he will compete what is the facility will give for the beneficiary poor people on the basis of that we are creating township number 1 model number 2 same amount of money will give private developer is having land he will develop LIG, MIG, HIG. In that, he will give our share for three uh, lakh rupees. If I pay for each unit, he will give me back both mixed. Third one, we are doing interest subvention scheme, two lakh thirty thousand. They are also eligible people. We will ask them to go. Developer will develop. We will give all permissions, everything, and also he will give that uh, number of houses, units for the poor, even slums. Bombay model we are taking up two lakh thirty thousand rupees government of India will give or otherwise will give some money. We will ask developer to share their profit between the two. That means developer and beneficiaries slum improvement clearance. <coughs> These are all the various models we are working. I am confident it will work very well. Single biggest challenge as you make cities are the engines of growth. No, it is inevitable, <coughs> but only problem is we have to prepare continuously. technology is a big tool but motivation is the biggest exercise if you do something today if you leave again it will come to back to square even that's why we are very cautious we are involving students in a big way every saturday afternoon i ask my people everybody should discuss debate or prepare some literature and also go to field tour your office make your office clean plant some trees protect the trees and also water conservation every month one day everybody should go to field talk to people motivate people door to door campaign everything they have to do it is the exercise they have started then naturally over a period of time i am creating some competitions some awards even after some time i may go some small punishment <laughs> that after, would be the interesting after, part <laughs> after preparation yeah Otherwise, if you do in the initial stage, total purpose will be. So then demotivation collapse. becomes an uh, incentive. Yeah. But uh, Mr. Naidu, great to hear that. Mr. Kant, uh, just to wrap this up, what you heard in, here this afternoon, what comes across to you as one of the biggest challenge? You named a chief minister saying that he is the cause of all the problems. There are issues like centre state. There are issues about governance. What, according to you, will be the biggest roadblock to make cities as engines of growth? Uh. Well, one is uh, you know the kind of political will uh, which CM Andhra has demonstrated in uh, uh, you know he did this in uh, Hyderabad and then he he's doing this in his new city of Amravati. I think you need every chief minister to have that political will to urbanize India. If you want India to grow at nine to ten percent for three decades or more, it will not happen without very unique. innovative and sustainable urbanization urbanization holds the key to india's growth and that requires huge amount of political will because india's political class comes from rural areas till 5 years back we did not even have an urban scheme 
The JNURM was the first urban scheme. For the first 60 years of our independence, we had no urban scheme. And that is why we kept investing all our resources into rural areas, and the rural areas kept getting poorer and poorer. So you need very determined political will to drive urbanization in India. And once you've got that political will, you need very good planning, very good detailed engineering. And when you're doing new cities, first create the layers of infrastructure. Don't get into speedy, don't rush up under pressure from journalists like you. I am no longer no, a journalist, because, just to be politically correct. laying the layers of infrastructure is the key. Why? Because once you've laid out top class infrastructure, the rest is easy game. It'll take off on its own. Because we create, we do a lot of things without doing the basics right. The crux is good infrastructure. Thank God I'm no longer an active journalist, otherwise I wouldn't have had it this afternoon. But uh, on that note, let me uh, wrap up by pointing out uh, three most important things I heard from uh, both of you. First, from the Chief Minister Andhra Pradesh, Mr. Naidu, it's really heartening to hear somebody say that technology and internet of things is a deadly combination. I wish more state chief ministers talk like you because that shows a great move ahead, at least you're preparing for the future. Uh, second, uh, about the change in attitude of citizens and, of course, uh, knowledge and uh, not uh, uh, facetious journalism, which kind of questions everything just for the sake of it. That's very important. And third, which I think, again, uh, was a very cool thing to hear is whatever Flipkart, Amazon and everything is doing to basic services, if leadership does that, there'll be far more efficiency and far better delivery of service from the government. So thank you for making those points. Mr. Amitabh Kant, um, uh, without bashing journalists up, political will, you bash polit politicians a bit, but political will, uh, most important, uh, movement to cities and attraction of cities is inevitable, so you can't stay away from that. And what is the most important as an answer to your question is as long as you keep the processes transparent, you can go for the best even if it is the most expensive. Thank you both for joining us and thank you to the audience for joining us. A uh, good round of applause.